In the year 1517, Martin Luther, a German priest and scholar, proudly proclaims the fallacies of the Church by breaking from the traditional Catholic values. His 95 statements symbolize the beginning of an era, an era of religious separation and conflict that would surround the centuries to come. Tetzel quickly runs to tattle on the terrible trouble of the tacking of the toddler's theses to the tile. My god, this alliteration. Tetzel, my henchman. What is this I hear of? The stupid, ignorant troublemaker has nailed his 95 theses to the Wittenberg Chapel! Did you say nailed? He nailed them? I've never heard of tape or Thumbtacks or something? Oh, holiness. What's his tape? Oh, never mind that. What is he protesting? He's protesting the sale of indulgences by the church and the concept of salvation and afterlife and the merciless killings of people by the church in Galatians 1 9 of Sola Fide. Oh, holy one? Oh, yeah, I need more cash money! Oh, oh. Apologies. I must have uh, dozed off. Anyways, we must call Charles V and start the Diet of Worms. Yes, my lord. I will get us started as soon as possible. How many worms do you need? Tetzel, you ignorant fool. It's a diet of worms, not diet of worms. So you want to put the worms on the diet, I see. No, I mean, you're German, right? It's a diet, it's a council in the city of worms. There will be neither more worms nor dieting involved. Your Holiness, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Me and Charles V are going to have a long conversation on the proper place for yeah. I can dress up for this. Order in the court, order in the court. Everybody, just shut up and eat your worms. We're on a diet. Um, um, Martin Luther, come to the stand. Um, you're accused of heresy of the utmost count, defacement of the Wittenberg Chapel, and jaywalking. Um, how do you plead? Not guilty. Overruled. According to Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire, I declare you and your religion banned. This injustice shall, shall not stand. Your house, which is divided, shall not stand anymore. Lutheranism will reign! Luther, after confidently nailing his theses, decided to take a trip to find some species who would follow him on his queries, as long as he said, pleasees. Okay, seriously, who even writes this shit? You, John Calvin, must be a great religious scholar. I want you to come with me around the globe, spreading Christianity. Bro, relax. You gotta learn to go with the flow. I'm sorry, what? <coughs> I believe in predestination, man. You know, everything in existence is willed by God. It's no point in worrying about life. So is that a yes? I go where the wind's taking me. So no? I don't know. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Sounds good. Let's go.
Back at Wittenberg Castle, Zwingli is torn by Luther's ideals. Oh, this is a disaster. The Reformation is being leaded by Martin Luther, but his view on the Eucharist is terrible. What am I to do? What is the true view, Andrew Zwingli? The true view is that the Eucharist is purely symbolic, nothing more. complicated, you know? Luther believes in consubstantiation. He thinks that the body and blood of Christ coexist with the bread and wine, but they don't actually become it. It's terrible. It's purely simple. Does it really matter? Why are you so upset about this thing? Does it really matter? Leave my presence. What? You're fired. Luther drags the dumb, druggy dreamer Calvin to the prince to try to convince him to convert to Lutheranism. Herr Luther, Herr Calvin, I've anxiously awaited your arrival. Bro, chill out. Anxiety will get you nowhere. How dare you speak to me in this way? I'm your prince. Is that a boy all right now? Take it down to a Shut up, you fool. How dare you speak to the prince in this way? Get out! <coughs> Whatever, man. Leave. State your business quickly. I apologize for bringing you here to board. I want you to think about the benefits of Lutheranism. What is this heresy? It's been banned by Charles V, the Pope. Imagine taking the land of the church, doubling the amount of land you have and then also receiving a, war, a reward greater than all earthly belongings. And then, if you order now by calling 1-800-M-LUTHER, that's right, 1-800-M-LUTHER will throw out a free printing press too. Two peasants working in a field suddenly become enlightened by Luther's ever-spreading ideals and decide it is time for change. Boy, mate, why we gotta dig this land for the Lord? He's the Lord, mate, that's just how it's done. But didn't Luther say everyone is equal? You know what? I think you're right. Rebellion! Rebellion! Martin Luther hears of the peasant uprising and decides to use his knowledge of the Bible to stop them. This is a disaster! If I don't stop the peasant revolt, the nobles won't call 1-800-M Luther. That's right, 1-800-M Luther, the numbers at the bottom of your screen. They won't ever call it again. I have to go stop them. Rebellion! Rebellion! Rebellion. <laughs> okay, shut up, you stupid peasants. All right, you smell like you haven't washed yourself since the flood, and you look like Mary's husband, Joseph. That's why she was a virgin. Go home. <laughs> Luther continued to spread his ideas across Germany and inspired other reformers to forever change the church. Calvin settled down and finally stopped being a hippie. Pope Leo and Tetzel fell into shame and binged themselves on gummy worms. And the rest of Europe, excluding the peasants which comprised 95% of the population, lived happily ever after. <laughs> Bye.